Hi, Alexandra. I just got your tweet that you were looking for some comments or posts or reactions, and I uh, just want to say a quick hello to, to you. And again, I appreciate the opportunity I had to speak to uh, the SUNY network earlier this year. And a uh, quick hello to your students as well. And I guess uh, you know, the topic, I had a chance to look through the, the uh, Prezi presentation that you had posted on different aspects of uh, the course. If that's the correct uh, course syllabus or introduction to the course at least and sounds like you're tackling uh, some pretty broad range of topics and it's uh, similar to an experience I had I guess just this last week I did a summer institute at University of Manitoba and we had a group of faculty in and one of the the things that, that came across especially throughout the week was first of all the huge complexity of tools that are out there and how difficult it is at the start to try and make sense of it and how easy it is as a newcomer to get overwhelmed by what's happening around technology and what's occurring in the field of communication technologies. The ability to create a blog post, to post something on a, a video or to any number of these resources are, are uh, it's so easy to do it and it gets overwhelming at the huge array of tools with which to do it. I think a lot of people who've been teaching for a while, and this was my experience when I first started with classroom teaching, was you're always seeking the right way to do it. And online these days, if you want to post video, you've got dozens of sites you can select from to post video. Uh, if you want to interact with someone else or with your students, you've got tons of tools, whether you're going to use something like Seismic or Twitter or perhaps a threaded discussion forum, and, and I believe the SUNY system uses, I'm not even sure what you use. I know uh, part of the system went to Angel, but I don't think the SUNY system did. Um, anyway, um, whatever you're using for a learning management system, these are all tools that you can think about and consider uh, different ways to use them. You're really only limited by your own creativity in what's possible. And that's a little unnerving at the start because it's difficult to find the one right answer, the one right approach. And I think that's a mindset that's difficult for instructors or educators to let go sometimes and to say, you know, I, I can, you know, one week I can do a video intro and the next week perhaps I can just do a podcast summary of the week before or perhaps I can use a tool like Articulate Presenter or meet online with a group of students with a tool like Ubu. I mean, you know, there's a huge array of options. And I think it's important that we embrace some of those options and recognize that uh, there's value in, in this, uh, this diversity of, of uh, potential. And we give students that choice. I mean, you can use any one of these tools for your work, your presentation, your, uh, you know, use what's out there. We don't have to squeeze everything into one tool the way that we perhaps had to in the past when we were largely confined to a learning management system. So I think that's the first point that I found was that, that educators needed to overcome that initial barrier of uh, the breadth and the array of tools that were available and, and finding a way to make sense of it. Uh, the second aspect that I found as we moved through the, the Summer Institute this last week was toward the end of the, the course, and this relates to an introduction to Emerging Technologies course I teach as well, that once you get to the end, uh, it's amazing how much progress someone can make as they begin to engage with these tools. It really doesn't take long. You just you need a, a few leverage points to get started, and that leverage point might be doing a podcast or doing a, you know, a contribution on Seismic. It doesn't have to be something enormous and it doesn't have to be, you don't have to have everything completely figured out before you start using the tools. And once you do start experimenting, you'll find, oh, okay, well, that worked well. You know, nothing broke when I tried Audacity or I created a PowerPoint and uploaded it to SlideShare and I uploaded an audio file and created a SlideCast. And once you do a few of these things, it's self-rewarding. It's easier to get started with something else than you want to continue experimenting. So uh, these, and ultimately, as it seems to be the topic of your course, the, the breadth of tools that are available help to increase the quality of student interaction. I remember reading one report recently on a group of medical students who were experimenting in Second Life. And well, the educator, uh, the, the, the uh, medical school had a Second Life uh, help desk, if you will, and then you go on the ward and go through the process of being a student in Second Life. And uh, as, as the students in, engaged in this Second Life initiative, the review after the fact was, well, did this tool help you learn better? 
And not surprisingly, most students would say, well, actually, no, not really. Um, you know, I, I don't know if it did. It's hard to measure those kinds of things. But the one comment they made, and I think this gets to the heart of a lot of these tools, was I was more engaged, though, than I would have been regularly. And that's what these tools are about, is getting students who are more active and who are more engaged. So even we might not initially at least be able to directly trace the use of some of these technologies to increase achievement of learning outcomes. But I think we can suggest that if we're better able to engage our students in the learning, we'll at least have a better prospect of achieving uh, learning goals or learning outcomes in a particular course. Anyway, take care.